So let's take a look at uh, a little bit more with expression language here, the EL syntax. So we, we saw in our views then, right, if we've attached an attribute, right, we set an attribute here in the view, we can then get things with any preferred syntax, right? We can use the JSP expression language is probably the easiest, most concise. Here, we can do the manual version where we have to go get the attributes first. We can do the JSTL tag syntax if you want here. That totally works. Um, and then looping through using JSTL and expression language. This is a combination here where we're going to combine both. And this is where we're going to end up, kind of looking at this sort of syntax. But you can go further as well if you want, which is fun. Um, so again, with expression languages, they deal with nulls a lot better. So if there isn't anything that is a stock attribute that was set, if we never set attribute on stock, we just get blanks. Right? It, doesn't, it doesn't crash versus we have to do some special checking here to make sure, hey, if it is null, either go add a new one here or figure something out for defaults on our own here for the JSTL beans and the manual methods. So we, there's a little bit more work there. Um, that is a little tricky. Uh, with expression language, we can get at other types. So Java beans, there are JSP tags here, um, only really work with actual Java bean classes. Right? And what we had here with the stocks here, this stocks object was not a Java bean. Right? It was an array list of a class here. So it gets a little bit funny there um, as well. Let's see, so those are pretty good. All right, so we looked at using objects, using our standard tags. So we did that one. So the dot operator is a little bit funny here when we're looking at using beans, right? Because it's not like we're calling a method at all. Behind the scenes it is, right? We looked at this stock class, oh, stock class here. And if we have a method for, where is it here, our get value, it essentially looks like we have a value attribute, right? All of our attributes are private. We just have public gets and sets. So there's no set value, but there's a get value. So in our expression language, we can still get value here as an attribute with that dot notation. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So anything with that get method is going to automatically translate for us right into this get method here. So there's a little bit of interesting stuff that happens behind the scenes there, uh, which is fun. And see those are good uh, so you can get specific about scope of where you store things we don't really get big into this you can store things at a page context, a request context, a session context, or the entire servlet context. Um, we, we don't do a whole lot with that. Um, but beans will start with the smallest context of the page, and then the request, and then the session, and then the application uh, as it works its way through. So you can specify which one you want if you, if you really want to. Um, so the other thing we can do with um, our expression language here, we, we can work with lists using index notation. Now it's a little funny here, but it works. So uh, what we do is we're going to use the square base notation for indexes. So if we have a bunch of attributes, we can get out, you know, this particular index, this particular index, this particular index. Um, it's, it's a little bit funny working with those here. So if we were to just take a straight in our stocks servlet, um, you know, we, we got the stocks array, so we should be able to work with that. So if we just wanted to reference one of them here in the view, 
here. So we'll, we'll put that maybe outside the table here. So this says, uh, how about an H2? We'll have a paragraph for a single stock. Keyboard is like lagging here. That's super weird. He's going to be our dollar sign for the expression language. So it's stocks. And then in braces here, we're going to put our index. Now, it's a little weird. We're going to put index of zero in quotes here. And then we want, um, how about name? So stocks of zero, name. Does that give me that attribute? Dot. Stock dot stocks, yeah. Dot name. Should we give you the name attribute here of the, whatever that stock is? So let's give this one a run. We'll start Tomcat for the first time. It'll work. Come on, start up. We're getting there. Test and test. There go our stocks. Servlet. It'll take a second to load that servlet here. Oh, I never, uh, that's right, we're not using database. Okay, so we should be fine. So our single stock here is Game Cup, Game Stop Corp. Man, that one, oh, that was kind of ugly in an H2, but it worked pulling out just one of them. So one you can use by index here. Now, index is either in quotes or numbers here. Uh, but if we're using the map type, right, uh, when we have to use quotes. So um, either one will be okay, but there's no good way to really loop through it, through it, um, in expression language like this. It gets to be a little funny here. Um, let's take a look. So if your class then, so let's have a, let's add a new class here. Let's call this say a portfolio. So portfolio is a bunch of stocks, essentially. So we need to have a private array of type stock. Here we'll call our stocks. And then we'll add all the things to make this a Java bean. Right? To be a Java bean, we need to implement, implement serializable. Serializable. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Serializable. There it goes. Serializable. Okay, and we got to import our array lists. Yes, please. Don't need those. Don't need those. All right, and then we'll add our gets and sets. Now, you do want to be a little careful with gets and sets for reference types. Because remember, when you get it, you're returning the memory address. Which is, it's okay, it's not, not the worst thing in the world. Um, but you're going to give anybody access to go and add and remove things from or an array list here. Which, maybe that's what we want. We just need to be careful with this one here. Um, and then we need a constructor. We need the noArgument constructor to be a Java bean. With no arguments. And then if we want to, we could also add in our own constructor here that takes an array list as well. Right, and essentially does this one here. So if we wanted, then we could call our own this with a new array list of type stock here. Right. This being, we'll call our constructor here to just give it a new array list. So if you don't specify 
we want to make sure we are setting a value for this, right? Constructor's jobs are to give values to all of your attributes. So if you don't specify, we'll make it empty, and then we can get and set um, those sorts of things here. Now, we could also, just for fun here, have a public um, void add stocks. We can give you a way to add a stock to our array list. Oops, not a P there. We could say our stock.add the stock. And this just gives you a, a quick way to access an individual or add an individual stock without having to call get stocks and then get yourself. Just an option, right? We don't necessarily need to do any of this, but we could give them more methods to interact with our array lists outside of that. The bean is just the minimum requirements. We can add more to it from there. So then in our stocks controller now, I'm going to use this array list. Hey, thanks so much for following along, my friend. Glad to have you here. Um, I'm going to use the same stocks array list to create a portfolio. So we'll make a portfolio, portfolio, portfolio equals a new portfolio, portfolio, there we go, given the stocks array list. And then we'll set the attribute for it here. For portfolio and portfolio. Okay, give it a little format. There we go. Then in my stocks view, okay, so this was looking at a single stock again. That was kind of ugly. Let's, let's let me take out the H2 header here because that was that was too big. One to paragraph. So using that expression language, if a uh, hydration reminder, thank you so much, my friend. Cheers. Oh, I wish I could figure out how to get those into the chat view here. That's okay. So with the expression language, if a class here, our portfolio class, has another class as its attribute, we just continue using the dot notation. So I could also then get this single stock. Um, that we'll say from stocks attribute is this way. And then we could do another one if we wanted from portfolio portfolio attribute is going to be my portfolio dot stocks because stocks is the attribute right so portfolio has a get stocks attribute so dot stocks will get the stocks array list from there then we can get index zero and get the name out so you just continue with the dots so class dot attribute dot attribute dot attribute or you know dot index dot attribute dot attribute and and on and on and on and on we should be able to get that one out as well now with the portfolio class and this is probably a little cleaner to use a, a class there than just an array list again because we can add some additional function features and functionality and whatnot so we still get the same one here so then if we wanted to change our loop here let's we'll, we'll do the same um sort of loop here um yeah, I think, I think we should be able to do this. So we, let's do, um, that's just for a single one. This was for all of them, right, in that whole stocks list. So let's do a similar thing. Let me grab this one here. And how about instead of a table, um, we just start another paragraph, maybe. No, paragraph. Okay, so we'll go for each. Now we want for each, we'll say this is a stock in portfolio, maybe portfolio. And this will be the name inside of here. And what is this attribute? It is the items come from the portfolio dot stocks attribute here. And this will be our stocks in portfolio name. And then let's just do these. How about as, should we do another table? I guess we'll do another table. Um, I don't know, that, that's okay, that's fine. We'll just do it, just throw it in here. We'll do another one right in here. Forget the paragraph. We should be able to get them all out of the portfolio object. Right, an instance of the portfolio given the stocks attribute. And this way we just have a single portfolio class. And again, we can do some other fun things with that portfolio class. Let's see if we can get that one to load. Yep, so we get our. We get the same values again. Yep, we get the same GameStop and AMC again. Remember, these were all duplicates here, so we just had the two essentially. 
So then what we can do with portfolio, which is fun now, we can add some features and functionality. We could say, um, how about a public double get total value? Right, so we'll say a double for value is zero and for uh, stock, stock in the stocks collection here, we'll do the little enhanced for loop. We'll take our value plus equal to stock dot get value. And we're done, we'll return the value. So now it's gonna look like I have a total value attribute. So in my stock view then, here in my paragraph, I can add another paragraph. Goodness, that the suggestions were just not great here. So we'll say total value of portfolio dollar sign to get, get the actual dollar sign and then the expression language on our portfolio portfolio dot total value. Right, and then I'll use the get total value attribute or a method, right, because it looks like an attribute here, it has a get method. So stocks controller, we'll split it here, and we are down $147 because we were down $157 on GameStop, but we made $16 on AMC. Right? If we bought it at $350, and now it's worth $20. Okay, does that part make sense? So we're just using that expression language, kind of grouping these things all together here um, as we go. All right, so. You can do some funny things with attributes and square bases. I don't recommend it here. Um, but you can you can do it with square braces instead of the dot notation. I don't I don't know why you would. That just looks really funny. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from that. Yeah, using using the the quotes is really funny. Um, I don't think that, yeah, this the, sorry the maps are really weird. I'm trying to make sense of their example. I think I think we'll be fine because we can add given attributes. Um, and we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we're good there. Um, some other expression language objects, which are really fun. Um, you can get parameters out as well. So there's a param, whatever the um, parameter name is, we can get out as well in the expression language. So if we're, so we don't have a form in here. Let's maybe make a new new page here then. So let's do a new JSP. We'll call this one our forms. Yeah, why not? Make it forms. So the forms JSP then. We'll we throw a little form in here. I don't think we had one in index, did we? No, I wanted to copy one, but that's okay. Uh, sure, that's fine. So we want to send this to the same stocks um, controller, right? So then yeah, I just want to go copy paste it here. I don't want to have to go find all that again. So for yeah, we got some forms here. We can copy. Did I go to Dunkin' Donuts for the donuts or the coffee? Uh, definitely the coffee. Yeah, I, although I do like donuts, they are bad for me as a type 1 diabetic, so I try and avoid them, bro.
um, just try. Hey, thanks so much for following along, my friend. Glad to have you here. All right, we got a four. No, that's our controller. Are you here? Let's see, I think we had one. We can copy this form, right? There we go. All right, oh, not too bad. Okay, we want to send it just to the stocks servlet. Um, let's just do a get one here. We'll make this a little bit easier here. And don't want to do username and password. Um, how about username and email address? So we'll have a username and email. Uh, maybe we'll pretend it's to register here. So in our JSP then, right, we can do our including. So I'm going to use my tag library first. So I can do my includes. And then we can include the header. We don't need any of this other stuff here. It starts out with the body for me. We'll just include the header. And then we'll include our footer as well. We'll steal this one. After we're done here. We don't need to end the body. Okay, we'll put in our footer. Okay, so how do we know how to get to this form here? So we probably want to have then um, a way of telling our controller which we want to go to. Do you think the coffee tastes like hot water? Really? And maybe, I don't know. Uh, not bad. And it's cheaper than Starbucks. <laughs> so, I don't know, I'm not too much of a coffee snob. Um, I, I do have, um, you know, if it's too weak, though, like, if it really tastes like hot water, then, yeah, that's no good. But as long as it's got, like, a decent strength, I'm usually pretty good with it. All right, so we need a way to say, hey, we should go to the stocks view or the forms view right so maybe we add in here um let's see so we'll have a um reference for stocks and then how about we have in here we'll say let's go to um i don't know action equals forms or something and we can look for that actions attribute here in our stocks so we can look and see, before we do any of this then, we can say if test.get parameter action equals words. Otherwise, we'll do this one here. Right, so then we'll send it on to slash uh, forms.jsp. Okay, that little format. Let's run. So see if we can add in that other link here, then will take us to the forms view. No, oh, we need it. Well, we need that action too in our form here, don't we? So we need a uh, input type is hidden, name is uh, action, value is forms. There we go. So we need one other input here to make sure when we submit the form, we come back to it. There we go. So we have stocks and stocks with action of forms. That probably shouldn't say stocks. Let's go change that one here. It should be forms. All right, it's probably pretty silly using the same controller here, but that's okay. All right, so we still have the header. Oh, we didn't change the header. Oops, well, that's what we should do. Um, it should go in the header. Our nav section. To have forms here. Okay, now we got that in our nav section. So go back to the stocks. Oops. Uh, uh oh. String is null. Oops. So we actually, I think we can cheat and do this backwards, right? Because we didn't have that attribute. So we want, let's try this here. Forms dot equal my 
request to get parameter action. So I think this is safer. Let's give that a try. Because where am I? There's too many parentheses? More parentheses. There we go. More parentheses. So if forms, which is never null, equals this thing. So if this thing is null, I think equals will be fine. Let's give that a try. I think we'll be okay. We just go to stocks. There we go. We go to forms, stocks, forms, right? What is that character? Where did that come from? Hello world. Oh, right there. That's where it is. All right, there we go. This one that clear. So now we should be able to say like test and test. We click register. It should bounce us right back here as a git here. Username, email, action, right? Test and test. Register, we get bounced right back. So what we can do in the view if you want, um, right, or in the JSP directly, all of this to get to the JSP where you can get some of these parameters out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Man. So we want the parameter. So let's say in here, I don't know, how about welcome. So this will be param, uh, dollar sign param dot. So this is saying, hey, go to the parameters and find the username value. And then uh, email param dot email. Okay, let's give it a so we should be able to say, okay, cool, let's go see if we can get these parameters out directly. No, welcome, there's nothing there, right? Because expression language handles that nicely. And if you have test, test at test dot test, we register, and we get pulling the parameters out directly in the view. Again, this is just in the view. We don't necessarily want to do a lot with that in the view, uh, but you can do that in expression language, which is fun. Um, and then you can also deal with cookies, which we haven't really got to yet. You can get values out of cookies as well to get particular values out, which is pretty fun. Um, so that should be fine. So expression language, you can do operators, right? You can do all your addition, multiplication, subtraction, all those sorts of things yourself if you want. Um, you can do modulus, right? You can do your relationals, greater than, less than, equal tos. Uh, we can do all of those in the expression language as well if we want. Uh, the ternary operators are kind of funny. Just kind of funny. Um, stretch. Thank you, my friend. Oh. So the ternary expressions are actually kind of useful here because we can, in our expression, quickly see if um, there is no value here, it's going to be false. So it's a null value there will, be, will not exist. So I can check and see if something does exist right, or not. We can use their, their username or we can use their email checking if it exists or not. Um, it gets a little bit funky. Um, and again, this is all in the view. It's probably easier to do this sort of thing in the controller first and then to set those values because you don't want to have to do, have too much code inside your reviews if you can help it. Um, life is e usually easier if you don't. All right, cool. So that was uh, actually most of the expression language. That uh, wasn't too bad here. Worked out pretty well. So we got to talk about the JSTL library here. So we're using the JSTL library, the core library here. Um, got a couple other fun options we can do in here. So again, we need to add the library here. So we want to right click add library and add the JSTL library that's there. Right? Make sure you do that first so you use it. And then in your JSP, you add that little, hey, I want to use this library here. So just add your JSTL. And then we have this line at the top and say, okay, I'm going to call them all with this C prefix. So anything C dot, 
we'll go and use it. So C import will do the core import here. Uh, use that kind of nicely for us here. So they have a formatting library, they have a SQL library, they have an XML library, they have a functions library, all sorts of really cool things we can do in there, um, which is pretty nice. So if we are taking parameters directly here, right, one of the things we might want to do is do that sanitizing. Right, when we looked at PHP, we wanted to do any encoding, so we didn't get any um, JavaScript issues where if someone embedded JavaScript in the query, it would run the JavaScript on your page. Right, so if we did that JavaScript alert, I forget what all is here. Um, let me just go grab that real quick. Alert, probably that one. Yeah, here we go. Don't need the function though, we just want it to be alert. That's fine. So let's drop this in. Come on. They get all in one line. We don't need the fun part, we just say alert. Come on. We'll just alert test. Okay, so I think that ought to do it here. So let's see if we can submit that then as a name here and see if it fits up. Come on, go on back. Go on. So we put that in for our name, whatever, and we get our JavaScript alert. Uh-oh, right, that's not cool. We don't want that, right? It doesn't even show anything because it's a JavaScript. So in the core library, right, anytime we're outputting parameters, right, there's a really handy um, core library for this. So we say uh, C out. The value that we want to output here then is equal to, oops, equal to, and then in quotes, we give it the JSTL, which is, or I'm sorry, the expression language, which is kind of funky here, but I promise it's not too bad. So we just say, hey, core library, output this value here instead. Now, when I refresh my page, it sanitizes it. Right? It still looks right here, but it's not actually running that JavaScript. Again, if I put it in email, because I haven't sanitized that yet, it'll run it. So we need to go sanitize that. So we can use that for sanitizing all of our stuff. It's a little bit obnoxious to have to do that, but really good practice anytime we're dealing with anything coming from the user. Right? And again, this is a good reason to do sorts of checking and stuff in your controller to keep up with that nonsense. Okay, and then I can send it both if I want. And it should be annotated on both sides. Oops, not that one. Oops, I need the script. Where'd it go? Did I lose it? Oh, no, I lost it. There it is. Here's my script. There. So if I put it for the username and the password, they both just nicely get sanitized. So that one's super handy here. Then you can also say we can add in defaults. So if there is no value, right? You can say, okay, this is the value, and then we can add a default for it. Equals no name. Welcome no name. That'll look real nice, right? So in our output then, if I just register. Oh, I didn't get it. Why didn't I get it? Oh, it's okay, because I am passing it. It's, it's just blank there. Okay, so empty is different from not being there. Let's try this one here. Oh, goodness, we'll just go to this forms one here. 
So no name, if there is no parameter, is different from there being a parameter and it being blank. Right? So technically username has a value here, it's just empty, versus here there is no username parameter. So you gotta be a little bit careful with your defaults. Uh, but yeah, outputting anything, using that output here to make sure we don't handle each of those is super handy. Um, the for each we've done, we looked at, the for each is super helpful for looping through things. Um, the for token's interesting, it just lets you kind of like break up a string. I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that one, it's not as interesting. Um, When we're looping that for each here, we can get additional information out if you're curious, right? So in the for each loops. So we have items here saying where we're getting them from. And then this is the variable inside loop what we're going to call it. We also then can add um, some values of where we're beginning in the loop. At right? the first index for the loop, we can add an ending index for the loop if we want. You can add the step, how much we want to change. So usually we step by one, right? We go from index zero to one to two to three to four to five, on and on and on. You can change that if you want. So just like we could in code, we could do a for each loop and or a for loop and say, hey, I want starting at index five, go up to index 10. We have control over all of that here as well using those other tags. So we can say, hey, I want to begin index zero, um, zero. I want to end at, say, index, I will say 10 here, and I want to step by 1. And then you can use those values inside of these here. So um, the, the beginning, ending, and um, I don't think the step one's interesting. We would say the var status of what we want to call it here is, is just status. So var status lets you get at all of these other variables here from something called status. So if we wanted to include some of that information here, we might say this is like um, called another table data for, oh, we can't add that to the table, can we? I guess we could in a different table, but that, that's no fun. Um, We'll just add it in here. So we'll, we'll take the var status, uh, sorry, status dot, uh, let's get the, how about the um, index here. So in our loop, then we should get the index value here out of whatever we're, we're looping through. Let's go back to our. Oh, I got to reload this one. That's the. Oh, well, it's just the JSP. So we should be fine to just hit the controller. It'll reload that JSP. So now we get, okay, this is index zero. This was index one, right, in this particular loop. So you can add in some additional variables here, which is kind of fun uh, working through those with the for each loop. The if tag is really nice, uh, allows you to do things if something's true. We can either change some syntax or we can change um, all sorts of different values here. So how about we do one here? Let's say, um, let's add in a, oh my goodness, HTML color. This is going to be really ugly here, but it'll be okay. Um, sure, why not? Um, do you want to do style? Sure, we could do that, I guess. Here. Okay. So, um, well, not a whole paragraph. Shoot. I don't want the whole one here. I just want for one, one piece here, just for font. Um, let's do it. I want the whole paragraph. Five. Come on, there's got to be a better way to do this. So I don't want it for the whole paragraph. That's the same link. This is not what I want. Friends. Yeah, it, 
we're not supposed to use font, but that's fine. That's fine. We'll do it anyway. We'll do it. So we're going to say C um, if. And we'll say, what is the test here? So the test is, so this is what we're going to check to see if it's true or false. So we want the portfolio total value here is um, that value greater than zero. So if it is, right, we want to do something, and then we'll end our, oops, uh, end the quote. Oh, there's end the quote. And we'll end the C if. Goodness, where's my else? No. Oh. Sorry, okay, so this is just a single if here. So if it's a single, if we're greater than, how about we'll do if we're less than zero, then we want to set the font color equals red property. And then we'll add that. Uh, well, no, I guess we just color it red. And then we'll end the font here. Ugh, gross. Format. I didn't format right. So if the portfolio's total value is less than zero, we'll add a font tag here using expression language. So it's not embedded Java code. It's using the tag library and expression language to do this for us. And we could do it in embedded code. There's nothing saying we can't do it, uh, but sometimes these just work a little easier or cleaner looking um, than having all of your Java code snippets inside of a servlet, right? And having to have code blocks and then end your code blocks and then uh, those sorts of things. So let's give that one a try. See if we can't say if our value is negative to get all in red. There we go. And now we get in red. And the rest is fine. So we can use a little if here. Say, okay, if it's red. Now, if we wanted to say red or green, then we need to do a choose. So instead of an if here, right, what we could do is we'll do a, let's grab a whole other paragraph here. I'm going to say C choose, and then in the choose block here, uh, goodness, we're going to have a when. So C when, and then our test, portfolio value is less than zero. We'll add the font color red. That ends the when. C when. So this is sort of like an if else, right? You can have multiple whens if you want, and then you can have a def or an otherwise, which is kind of crazy, but that's okay. Um, so either it's red. Um, we're going to do that one anyway, so we'll end the font afterwards here. And we'll spit out the whole value. Oh, and then a C default here, so or otherwise, right, otherwise, not like that, oh yeah, see otherwise, okay, otherwise then we'll set it to green, here, so we're getting either red or green, depending on when this test is true or not, let's give that one a try. Oh, we're never going to turn it to green, are we? Because we don't have a green... Uh, oops, uh-oh. Legal text inside of choose tag. Oh, we can have this one in there. Shoot. Um, so we need that outside of the choose. There we go. It's all got to be inside these tags here. There we go. So either red or green font. Again, we're not going to get the green font because we're never going to be greater than zero in this portfolio. I guess we could change the portfolio and add to it, right?
and now we get it in red again, right? So if we were to change our portfolio or like add a different stock to our portfolio where we're making more money, right, that should turn green. So let, let's, for fun, let's go in here and change our stock real quick, uh, stocks in the stocks controller. And let's, uh, let's say we made some more money on this. So maybe we bought this one at 100 instead of 300. Now this we have to rerun because it needs to reload the servlet here. Right, go to the stocks and now it's in green with that else or the otherwise right so this one is just it's not red this one is green because right? that was the otherwise all right i think that's pretty good let's see urls is fine other tags um you can set values you can catch exceptions in, exp in expression language. You can get parameters. Uh, you got all sorts of fun options, uh, which are pretty cool. And then they go through and show you the cart application as they built it out with expression language and JSTL. So kind of that mix and match. We're going to take advantage of the JSTL library then to let us do a lot of this stuff. Um, now, it's not that we couldn't do it without code blocks, though. So we're not really gaining a whole lot out of this. By using our expression language, right, we could do the code blocks, but sometimes it's nicer to not have the embedded code, right? So, like, to do this with embedded code would be, we could do a similar approach. We'll, we'll try that. We'll do one more with embedded code just to compare those. So, we would say, okay, let's start a code block. And then we'd say, hey, if our, now, I can't use portfolio here. I can't use expression language inside of code. So, I have to go back to the getting an attribute, right? So we'll go get the attribute out in our code block. So this is going to be a portfolio. This is my portfolio. Attribute is a portfolio. Um, oh goodness. Of get attribute portfolio here. And then it doesn't even know the portfolio is. So we have to go up and add our imports, right? So we're importing stocks. How about stocks.star? Auto work here for our page imports. There we go. Now it knows what a portfolio is. Eventually we'll end our code block here. And then we'd have to say, okay, now we have the portfolio. If my portfolio dot get total value Right, is greater than zero or less than zero, less than zero, then what do we want to do? Well, then we need to end the code block and output something, right? And then to output something here, this is our if, we would say the font here, color is red. And then we want to start a code block again, right? Because then we want the else here. Else, uh, oh, elk, else. Then, if it's not that, then we want the font color to be green. Oops, color equals green. Um, and end the code block. And then after that one, start the code block again. So you can see why this you might prefer the expression language, right? It's just already getting kind of crazy here. Right. Then we need to output the total value, right? regardless of which one it is, if or else. So then we would say, okay, I just want to output my portfolio attribute dot get total value. Then I want to, oops, um, I think I'll start a type. Oh, I didn't end the code. Uh, Got to end the code block for that ending the else there, then I can output, right? I guess I could just leave that in there, right? Um, that's probably fine. And then we want to end the font here, right? 
So this whole whole ugly mess here of code block and code block code block and code block code block and code block is it's workable here. It's just kind of funny, right? And now we okay, just the value again, just the value of it here. But we could do that. So is it this one prettier or this one? Again, you know, it's a little bit funny too on its own. Um, it's not necessarily that much better, but I think a little bit straighter forward managing if else is inside of what needs to go in and out and, and that sort of thing. Um, using the, the tags is sometimes a little bit easier here. Okay.